The Travel Transformation Podcast is proud to be partnered with Give the Goodness Global, an amazing global outreach project helping families in need all over Southeast Asia and beyond. Please check them out at instagram.com forward slash give the goodness global today. And now on to the podcast episode. Welcome to the Travel Transformation Podcast, the podcast that explores the life-changing potential of solo travel, intentional travel, and location-independent working. Whether you're an aspiring digital nomad or simply want to boost your confidence through epic travel experiences, I'm here to motivate and inspire you to go after all your wildest dreams. I'm Jessica Grace Coleman, author, travel transformation coach, founder of the Travel Transformation Company, and your host for the Travel Transformation Podcast. Travel changed my life. Now let's change yours. You ready? Let's go. Hi, and welcome to the Travel Transformation Podcast, the podcast where we talk all things travel and all things transformation. I'm your host, Jessica Grace Coleman, and today I have a guest, Claire Pritchard, a life and travel coach who helps the 40 plus generation reignite their 20 year old selves' travel dreams and begin their travel journey through building self confidence, self worth, and a positive money mindset. In this episode, we talk about money mindset and money blocks and how they can stop you from pursuing your life and travel goals, how we can learn so much from our travels and the people we meet while traveling, how to reframe travel as being an investment in yourself rather than a simple cost, and much, much more. This was a great interview, so let's get straight to it. So hi, Claire. Welcome to the podcast. How are you? Hello, I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me on. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. And and sure, no problem. It's great having you on. And thank you for coming on on a bank holiday. (laughs) We're recording this on the uh, bank holiday after the coronation. So thank you for coming on. Okay, so to start with, please, can you tell our listeners who you are, where you're from and where in the world you are right now? Yeah, so I'm Claire. I'm a transformational travel coach. Work with people on their mindset, uh, money mindset specifically, confident and self-worth to build themselves up and know that they are worthy of traveling and to get themselves feeling that they are ready to go traveling. I'm originally from Manchester in the UK and I'm actually in Manchester in the UK at the minute. So I've been home actually a couple of years now. COVID brought me home and it was just really nice to be home after quite a few years being away. Hanging out with my parents, my family, my sister. Here for now, watch this space, but in lovely rainy Manchester. (laughs) Nice. Uh, Where were you before then, before COVID? I was living in Iceland oh, wow. before COVID, so me and my boyfriend just went over there for six months in winter, which was an interesting decision because obviously it's really dark for 80% of the time, but it was super cool, like such a cool experience. It was like you get to see sunrise and sunset every day because it rises at half 11 in the morning and goes down at 2pm, so you can guarantee that you're awake all the time. It was a really cool place to experience for, for the six months we were there. That's amazing. I've been for like three days, six months. How did you sort of deal with the? Are you someone who gets affected by like darkness and weather and stuff? Because I do. And like, I don't know how I would deal with six months over there. So did you like have any coping mechanisms or you just had to stick it out? Like, Yeah, so I feel like that was the place that I realized that I don't cope well <laughs> in those situations. <laughs> And we kind of just had to stick it out. We had jobs and we had planned to go there to earn money, to save money. So we kind of like knew the outcome. We were hitting that. And we just had to try and socialize as much as possible. I think that was what it was for me. We were in really isolated areas. Not only was it really dark, we were super isolated. So it really was quite a killer. Do you know where the gazer is on the gold, the gazer on the golden circle? It's um, so it's like there's the golden circle route and there's the gazer and there's the big waterfall and um, Gulf Foss. Basically, it's all the pressure underwater and it shoots up. So we were just there, so we'd be able to just go drive five minutes and go and sit and watch the gazer. Pretty much every day, it'd be like, what do you want to do to the gazer? Let's go yeah. to the gazer. <laughs> So we just kind of tried to go out and about as much as we could when it wasn't six foot worth of snow on the floor that would stop us from going out and about. So it was testing. It was an experience for a real cool country and a real yeah. cool place to be. Yeah, I really like Iceland. I want to go back and like explore more. And I, I sort of went in like autumn, winter time as well. So it'd be nice to go in the summer and see what it's like then too. Yeah, very different, very different. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. So you mentioned a little bit there, but can you tell me what you do in terms of your business and how you help people with your coaching? 
Yeah, so the people that I work with are people who have always wanted travel. It's always been a dream of theirs and they've kind of like worked through life. So maybe they've had kids and kids have come first or they've got a career and there's just always this pull towards traveling. I basically work with them. A lot of people come to me like, I really want to travel, but I can't afford it. And so we look at the money mindset and see why they're telling themselves that because often they do have the money. They just don't know they have the money. So I work with them on their money mindset and making sure that we're aware of what money is coming in and out and what beliefs they have about money because this then impacts actions. We look at confidence. So a big thing with confidence is, uh, sorry, a big thing with traveling is confidence. Like you have to, like booking that flight, like getting out there for the first time, it's so overwhelming. And so we do a lot of tips and tricks to build that confidence and get yourself ready to be going out on that first trip, wherever it would be. And then also knowing your self-worth as well, because a lot of when you're investing in traveling, you're investing in yourself. And if you're not doing that, is that because you don't think very highly of yourself? Do you not think you're worth of that investment? So we do a lot of self-worth work to challenge any beliefs that you might have about yourself. Basically know that you are 100% worthy, you're 100% confident, and you are absolutely ready to go and live this traveling dream that you dreamt of. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I completely agree. It's all about confidence and self-worth and I mean, I've I've spoken to my friends who were like, I don't know how you can do what you do. Like, I wouldn't have the confidence. And I'm like, well, I didn't have the confidence to start with. Something you work on, something you gain by traveling as well. Like, it's all to do with confidence. So that's really great. So I know one of the things you talk about is money mindset, which I believe is such an important topic in general. And I'm really interested in it as well. And I think, as you said, it really ties into traveling and spending and justifying spending money on travel, which people think they have to do, all that stuff. For people who might not have ever heard of this term or this idea of your money mindset, can you explain a little bit about what it actually is and how a bad money mindset can stop us from fulfilling our traveling dreams? Mm -hmm, Of course. So your money mindset are attitudes and beliefs that you have about money. So they're formed from past experiences. So how you saw your parents act and behave with money, what you learned about money in school, people that you hung out with. At the age of six, you're like a sponge. So you've absorbed so much information about money. And this has now formed your money mindset. So, for example, if you heard your parents say money doesn't grow on trees, that will impact how you view money now. So it might make you want to save all of your money and never spend it because your program now think that money isn't something that comes easy to you. And then as well as these stories, it creates feelings. And depending on what these feelings are, this also then impact how you act and spend your money. So another example is if you heard that rich people are greedy, it may subconsciously deter you from making a lot of money because you don't want to be associated with being rich and greedy. And so once you've got all these different stories, it then impacts the way that you spend your money. Like I said earlier with traveling, people are always saying, I can't afford that. I could never do that. But this is just a story that you're telling yourself. And once you're able to realize that story and change the narrative, you'll then be able to start looking at traveling in a different way. And then if you look at traveling as the value rather than the cost, it makes it so much more accessible. So rather than, no, I can't afford that or I won't be able to do it. Instead of thinking, I'm going to be spending a thousand pounds on this trip, think of I'm going to go and see Machu Picchu, which is one of the wonders of the world. And it's something that I've wanted to do forever. And as soon as you change that narrative there and focus in on the value you will get from it, it completely changes your story and the way you'll then start acting with money leading up to it. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Once you start thinking of travel as, an investment, something for your self-development, something for your happiness, like something that you can look back on in years to come and feel good about like those kind of experiences, especially with other people or if you're with a group or something are like priceless. So you can be like, I'm going to spend a thousand pounds on this, but you're going to get out of it so much more stuff that people don't really take into account. And that's so true. That's a really great way of looking at it. You mentioned a bit about it there, money blocks specifically. What are they? Why do we have them? And why are they such a big deal? Do you think like, what is it that makes because I completely agree, like it's in your childhood, you hear some things from your not necessarily your parents, even like teachers or like on TV or movies or in books, and it sort of like worms its way into your mind. And you think, oh, well, rich people are jerks like I don't want to be a jerk you know that kind (laughs) of thing so why do you think they're such a big thing even 10 20 30 years later and how can we start overcoming them so we're so programmed to think that money is the root of all evil like you say on films like the evil person is always the one with loads of money and then straight away that's in your brain isn't it we're so programmed to think it's bad but also not to talk about money like if you think about salaries when you go into a job it's like right this is what you're getting paid 
but don't discuss it with anyone else. And the only reason that happens is because that benefits the company because they can bring two people in on the same level and then pay them different salaries. Mm -hmm. So we're learning that money's bad when actually it's just benefiting the company. And if you earn loads of money, you're seeing this like, or like you're showing off or you're cocky. And if you don't earn a lot of money, then you're not good enough. So already like money just as a whole has this real bad atmosphere, this bad topic. And it's like a topic that we won't talk about. And having money doesn't make you a good or a bad person. That money isn't anything. It just is. It's an energy exchange. And so leading on from that being the first thought that people have about it, other blocks could be like, I'm not good with money. So I listened to a podcast the other day and this lady's like, oh, I'm, I'm not good with money. I can't handle money. But actually, she'd never handled money before. She'd recently separated from her partner and her partner did all the finances. It wasn't that she was bad with money. She'd just never been given the opportunity to show herself that she was good with money. So it's really trying to question these beliefs that you have and rewrite them. So rather than I'm not good with money, I'm giving myself the chance to show that I am good with money. And it's completely changing these beliefs and questioning, are they true? Can you prove them? Can you disprove them? And when you actually start looking at these different money blocks and questioning it, you'll then start to see they're actually just beliefs that you have rather than they're true. I think one for women that comes up a lot is, oh, I'm only really capable of earning a certain amount. And it's that glass ceiling again, isn't it, that comes in? And as soon as you have that thought, are you going to aim to earn higher than what you think is your glass ceiling or what is given to you as the glass ceiling? Because naturally, as women, we do have that glass ceiling. We are told not to aim higher. Like think how many directors are women, the gender pay gap. There's so many different things in society that just tell us, actually, as women, we won't earn that much because we're women. <laughs> yeah, I totally get that. And I think that's probably one of mine. Like, I'm aware that I have certain money blocks and just blocks in general. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> like, <laughs> I've got a cold uh, to do with mindset. <laughs> Um, like mindset blocks, things like that. And you're right, it's like for women, especially the, the glass ceiling, they're not earning enough. And this thing called the witch wound. I don't know if you know about that. Like sort of all generations past, like you grow up hearing about women in history being accused of witchcraft. And anyone who stands up and is different or try to stand up for themselves, they get stoned. Or Especially women, but it does happen for other people as well. We sort of grow up hearing that in history and that sort of becomes part of our witch wound as well like it's yeah. a big range in us that being a woman you can't do certain things because horrible things will happen to you like even if we know it's not the case these days in most countries obviously it is and still in some countries it can still really like affect us without us even realizing it definitely and I think it, you get labeled as well don't you so if you do stand up for yourself or you do talk about something that is maybe a taboo subject you get labeled and it's never a positive label it is always a negative and a bit like oh she's a bit too loud she's a bit too cocky and no actually she's standing up for herself she's got a voice and it, yeah. it sounds the same as yeah those witch wounds that kind of just it's always the negative rather than the positive side of it Oh, definitely. These kind of things like, really fascinates me because it's something you might not even realise is happening in your own mind until you start reading about it or like hearing about it or like talking through with a coach or something. And then you're like, ah, oh, huh, maybe that's why I can't earn more money, like that kind of thing. Exactly. So yeah. OK, so we mentioned this a bit, but why do you think so many people have specific money blocks or things holding them back when it comes to travel? I think travel is seen as this thing that kind of like wild and crazy and it's not the normal go to college, go to university, get married, have kids, retire, done. And because it's so different, it has this view that it's crazy and wild. And actually, there's so much positive inside goodness that comes from travel. It's not just that you get to go and experience the things, but you as a person get to grow like the amount. Of, I've never heard anyone come back from traveling and that. Oh, I didn't enjoy that. Or I didn't learn something about myself because you always do. And I think especially in the UK, to go and travel is to go and do something very different. I know in Australia, like you can take a year out of university to go and travel because they value, they see all the good things that can come from traveling. Whereas in different cultures, it's just not looked on positively. And obviously that then gets bought, doesn't it? If you're in, say, like younger generation, if you're in college or in school, you don't get told about going to travel. You get told to go to university or you get told to get a job. So you haven't even really got travel in your mind. And then if you jump to the other side of maybe people whose kids have gone, like, so in the nest or they're about to retire, it's then, OK, well, now, like, slow down. You know, you're getting a bit older, so you don't want to push yourself. You know, be careful of your back. And so, again, you're just getting told to, like, slow down. But actually, like, midlife, it's midlife. Life. it's not end life like go and travel go and do all these different things like the world's still there it's made to explore 
Like, I know, I don't know if you've seen that. When I was in Nepal, there'd be like 70 year old women with trees on their back walking up hills, and no one's telling them they're too old to do anything. But society just tells you that. So you then learn you shouldn't be doing it. And therefore, you're kind of like get in a little box and sit and be where you're meant to be. Whereas actually, travel is one of the best growths that you can ever go and do. Since the start of the pandemic, many people have been reconsidering the ways in which they have fun. After a horribly isolating couple of years, we're now craving connection, community, and real deep conversation. We don't want to do the same old stuff every time we meet up with friends. We want something new, something different, something more. Enter the Flip the Script Party Packs. These digital party packs will help you flip the script on your usual parties and flip the script on your lives. Yes, this is self-development, but not as you know it. When you buy a Flip the Script Party Pack, you'll get taken to a super secret page on our online portal where you'll be guided through your very own Flip the Script Party with videos, fun worksheets, and printables to help you throw the best Flip the Script Party ever. There's a party pack for everyone and every situation. Mindset makeover, business bestie, life goals and legacy, birthday boost, hen do hootenanny, and team building takeover all designed to help you have a great time in a fun, collaborative setting. They're also perfect for when you're meeting people on the road and you want to get to know your new travel buddies. Small talk's dead. It's time to get deep with a Flip the Script party. Just head to traveltransformationcoach.com forward slash party to purchase or get all six party packs free when you sign up to the Flip the Script Digital Nomad Academy at traveltransformationcoach.com forward slash academy. And now let's get back to the Travel Transformation Podcast. You were saying like with different countries viewing travel different ways. I think it's definitely true, different countries viewing money different ways as well. Like you were saying earlier about we get taught not to talk about salaries and things like that. Whereas I'll be traveling and like as a Brit, I'm not used to talking about money or what I earn and it's like kind of taboo. And then I'll like be hanging out with someone from like the Netherlands or like South Africa or somewhere. And they'll just come out. They'll be like, so how much do you win? Or like, how much do you charge? Like, it's just completely normal for them to talk about it. And it sort of quite, quite, like catches you off guard. You're like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I should say. <laughs> you go all British. And, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're like, what's the big deal? So it's really interesting to see the way different countries approach money and travel. Like, it's, it's really interesting. So have you had your own experience with money blocks or like a negative money mindset in the past? Is that why you wanted to do this work or what made you want to get into this kind of coaching? So into this kind of coaching was I realized that a lot of people were saying, so even before I became a travel coach, when I just did my traveling, everyone was always saying, how do you afford it? I could never afford that. Where do you get the money from, et cetera, et cetera. I didn't really think anything about it. I was just like, oh, I'm working hard and saving the money because I didn't really know anything about money mindset. And then it was only when I started listening to it a little bit more and I was like, oh, yeah, that's me. That's me too. Yeah. And it's all these different beliefs that I've got from my parents. It's the way that you learn, isn't it? That I've then become so interested in money mindset. And then the more people that I tell of what I'm doing, they're like, no, see, I'd love to travel, but I just couldn't afford it. And I'm like, why do you say that? How do you know you can't afford it? Do you know what money you've got coming in and going out? And people, like it was one of my colleagues and she was like, yeah, I know exactly what money I've got coming in. And I was like, exactly. She was like, "Eh, ish. So it went from like a really confident yes to an ish. And I was like, if you can go from a confident yes to an ish in less than 30 seconds and we actually look at your money, then you'll realize that you will have the money in the account. You just don't know what it's being spent on. And for me personally, I was looking at investing in a business coach and I kept saying to myself, I can't, I can't afford it. I can't afford a business coach. It's so much money. No way, no way. And then when I actually sat down and I looked at it, I was like, I can afford it. I just don't know where my money's going. And, you know, like a nice coffee here or something there, it all adds up. So as soon as you become more aware of it, you then realize that you do have the money and you look at the value of what it is that you're investing in. And it's the same with traveling. You look at the value, like I did earlier, of being in Machu Picchu or the Taj Mahal, and then your story changes. And then you start looking to invest your money in yourself and in what you want to do. Yeah, I totally agree. And it's it's such a great parallel. I can't afford a business coach or I can't afford a mindset coach or I can't afford anything to do with my business. And then I can't afford travel. And if you look at what you get out of it, and like you say, actually start to look at where you, you are spending money and what you want to prioritize, then it all sort of changes in your mind. Yeah. 
And it's like if you think, well, if you don't invest that money in traveling, what are you going to invest it in? Are you just going to pay your mortgage off every month and your car finance? And, and that's essentially what the money will go on because you're not going to consciously take it and put it into something that you're really interested in. So as soon as you become aware of it, you then see the difference of, well, I can either go and do six months traveling or I can pay my mortgage or you could even just incorporate more holidays into your life. I think that's one of the main things that I look at with clients when they start with me is what is traveling to you because it doesn't always have to be these six months to a year trips and it doesn't have to be selling up your home like if you enjoy your job and you just want to incorporate travel into that more right let's look at that how do we do that where do you want to be going and it's knowing what traveling is to you and how that then fits into your life as well yeah definitely and there's like these days like you say there's so many different ways of traveling and you just have to figure out what you want to do and there are so many options, so it's like a really good time. <laughs> yeah. You're traveling. Okay, so I ask every guest what their favorite places in the world are. And I say you can pick three if you need to. But you went straight for one answer, which <laughs> the only person to have ever given me one answer. So I'm very <laughs> impressed. And you said Sri Lanka. And I've never been there. So can you explain to me why you chose that as your favorite place in the world? Yes, the people, the food, it's you've got the tea plantation, so you can go and do hikes and walk, and then you've got the beach. I think it really does just tick all the boxes of what you want when you go traveling. So usually I do country in a month, and it was just the perfect ticking of all the boxes that you'd want. You know, you could go and do your hike, but then knowing that you were, knowing you were going to relax. The people are just the most helpful, lovely people. It's a really easy country to travel, but You've also got loads of culture as well. I think that's always a really important thing when you're doing traveling is to like put your boxes of you just getting in your different cultures. And it was just a country that I felt really relaxed. We were playing cricket on the beach with the locals pretty much every day. I went back about a year and a half later and one of the locals walked down the street and like, recognized me straight away. And I was just like, that's insane. Like that is just like the kindest thing ever for someone to actually really recognize. You're not a tourist that must go through that little town. And for them to recognize you, I was like, like it touched me a little bit. You know, I was like, that is so sweet. The people and the food is insane. There's no country that does the food like Sri Lanka. It's amazing. Oh, you're really selling it to me. I've actually, <laughs> I have a friend who, she and her husband are going going this summer so she's really excited to go and yeah it sounds amazing place okay so do you have any countries or places on the top of your bucket list right now it sounds like you've gone to a lot of places so <laughs> is there anywhere left <laughs> that you really want to Gosh, the list never gets shorter, does it? You always add into it. I would absolutely love to go to Tonga. Tonga is so high up on my list and kind of like all the islands over that side. But it's just such a long flight from here, like you really need to commit a good, a good few months to it. But Tonga is really high on the list. And India. I really want to go to India. Hopefully we'll be going to India in January. Oh, nice. Again, just for like that bit of culture. Since I've been home from Iceland, most of the trips that I've done have been to Europe, which obviously Europe is so amazing to be able to jump on a plane and be in a different country in like two to four hours. But I just sometimes really just want that shock of culture to just hit me. So I think India will be that just nice hit of culture, like completely different. Again, that food is going to be insane there. So yeah, India, India and Tonga, two very different countries, but definitely there, up there on the list. That's really interesting. I've never had anyone say Tonga before. That's really cool. <laughs> what would you say is the biggest lesson you've learned from either your travels or from someone you've met while traveling? or from your coaching around travels? I think maybe two things. That there's always something to learn from someone that you meet. I was actually, so to long story, my old housemate who lives around the corner from me is someone that I met when I was building schools in Nepal. And we always say that, like it baffles us, we're like, if I hadn't have got on this one particular bus this one day in Myanmar, I would never have found out about the volunteer and I would have never gone to Nepal. And he was in the exact same situation. We were like, and if that hadn't happened, then we wouldn't be sat on the sofa now talking, would we? And our friendship group that we have from the port, and we literally, you know, when you kind of kind of like spiral a little bit. So we were sat speaking to him about that. And it was that no matter who you meet, they will always have one useful piece of information for you. And even if it's someone that you meet and you think, oh, maybe they're not my kind of person or we don't have much in common, they'll always have something for you to learn from. And I think it's just being open enough to have those conversations with different people and see what you can take away from them. And I think the other one is that you're never too old to travel. I see so many things. I actually edited a post the day it's like travel whilst you're young before something and I was like no travel whilst you're alive like just because you're 30 40 50 
start traveling. Like there's so many people that start traveling in their cities. And I honestly think it's cool to see like you looked after your kids, you smashed your career, you've done absolutely everything for everyone else first. And now you're choosing you. I just have so much respect for that. So I think, yeah, be open to speak to as many people as possible and take a learning away from each person. And you are never too old to travel. You can go travel. Did you see the two best friends who were 80 who had just like traveled the world? <laughs> I think, I can't remember how many countries they ticked off, but they were just like, we kept saying we were going to do it and we never did it. And we just thought, bugger it, let's go. And the two of them just went traveling around the world. It was like maybe a couple of months ago, they just got back and they were like 80. It's like if a pair of 80 year olds can do it, you absolutely, anyone can do it. Right. Like, so cool. Wow, I love that so much and totally agree. Like I'm staying in a co-living house at the moment in Spain and I was here last year as well and we get all kinds of ages like 20s, 30s, 40s and last year there was a couple, I can't remember if they were in their 60s or 70s, like living with a bunch of 20 and 30 year olds but like having the mindset that that's okay and you can learn from younger people and like obviously we can learn from older people like we learn so much and yeah I totally agree that you can always learn from someone even if you you're not necessarily going to be friends with them or you're not they're not the kind of person you hang out with you can learn so much just from like observing them seeing how they deal with things seeing how they work like we're working here and everything and just having conversations that you wouldn't normally have with like people from different countries or different cultures and things like that like always things you can learn from traveling itself and then from the people you meet while traveling so totally agree with that. So you mentioned your coaching services. Who are your services for? And if someone's listening to this and they think maybe I've got money mindset issues or I always say I can't afford traveling and all that kind of stuff, um, how can they find you and how can they get your services? Yeah, so I work with people who are in midlife, so from 40 plus who have always wanted to travel or who may be loving a bit of TikTok scrolling and are thinking this is something I want to do. And they can get me through. So I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook under at CP Travel Coach. And I'm also on LinkedIn and TikTok. And it's all at at CP Travel Coach. And just send me a message. It doesn't have to be anything formal. I know it's like a big step to reach out to someone. So I make it as relaxed, as informal as possible. But send me a message and say you're interested. And we just have a chat and we just see what it is that you want to work on and how we can get you living out your traveling dreams when you're ready. Nice. That sounds great. And yeah, I'll put the links in the show notes as well for anyone who wants to reach out to you. So yeah, one just before we go, is there anything else you'd like to talk about, mention, promote, or any message you want to leave our listeners with before we leave? Yeah, if you've listened to this and you're tempted, but you're just not 100% sure, I have a visualization. I sent out to quite a few people and they say it has really motivated them. It's hit home with them. So if you're interested in that and you want me to just send it over, again, just reach out on social media, pop me your email address and I'll send that over to you. It's a really good way to tap into all your senses and to really visualize and see yourself living out that traveling dreams because once you once you visualize it, once you're thinking about it, your emotions, your actions all fall into place afterwards and it will be your first step to get you going. Nice. I love that visualization. I think it's so powerful. So that's a really great way to start thinking about this if you haven't already. So great. OK, well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. It's been nice to talk to you and thank you for coming on a bank holiday as well. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Travel Transformation Podcast with me, Jessica Grace Coleman. If you enjoyed this episode, please rate and review and spread the word if you have friends or family who also want to transform through travel. For a chance of winning one of my books in ebook form, please review this podcast on Apple Podcasts and send a screenshot or just your name to info at traveltransformationcoach.com or at traveltransformationcoach on Instagram. I'll be picking a new winner each month and you can choose between any of my non-fiction titles including Write Your Life, Write Your Year and Intentional Travel Transformation. You can find out more about me at traveltransformationcoach.com where you can also get your free travel transformation guide and until next time I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye!